Hey, Dave, how you doing? Doing good. How you doing? Good. Hanging, hanging in there. So is Pat, Pat one? What's up? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, did Pat want to join us tonight? Uh, Pat, uh, she went somewhere. I don't know where she went. <laughs> what, what happened? Uh, I'm launching a meeting. I don't. Damn it, the hell. Okay. Uh, there I am. No. Uh, hey. What the hell is going on here? I don't know. I'm checking to see who all has responded. Okay, open link and dialogue your brother. Okay, there I am again. Um, I, put I, this see, down I here. see you. Yay. There I am. <laughs> Yay. Um, Oh, I went to put this light on, but it didn't get on, did it? Oh, oh we got Janine joining. Ah, uh, Janie, 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 Janie. Well, uh, the hell? Oh, Ulster Democrat. So I think that's Jeff. Hi, Janine. Hello. <laughs> Yay. <clears throat> I think that that's Jeff who's joining, but he's not quite there yet. I, I, I know Ju said she would be here. Michael said he won't be here. Put this thing here. Connor, Connor said he was ready. Oh, there's Jeff. Hi there. So, so Jeff, yeah, Jeff, your uh, your thing says Ulster Democrats. I don't know if you want to be Ulster Democrats. Yeah, I'm all over your name here. Yep, but you, you can if you want to, though. Hi, Jude. Hi, uh -huh, Jude. <laughs> So we're supposed to have Connor. Uh, the great news is we have a quorum because now Jew's official. <laughs> it's so yay, we have a quorum, but we'll we'll wait another minute or two. I do expect we're going to have Ed, and Connor wanted to present his scenic overlay stuff at this meeting. So Connor wanted to be here. So um, he has to be on the agenda actually. So I actually wound up spending uh, the weekend in New Jersey. So uh, how much snow will I see? I'm coming home tomorrow. How much snow will I be shoveling tomorrow? None. Oh, really? Yay. I mean, mine all melted. Wow. Mine <laughs> well, I guess Yay. it depends on your driveway. If your driveway was plowed, then it's probably clear. Cool. Well, we, we do have people plowing the driveway, and the snow has been so... They plow up, it's over three inches, and they only plowed once before this storm. So it's been a pretty well behaved winter, all things. Well, mm -hmm. except for that ice storm, which was um, a disaster. Yeah. But uh, so, okay. Well, let me pull up. We might as well start uh, getting going. We have everybody here. So we'll start out. Let me get a couple of documents handy. And one more document handy. Well, I won't worry about the minutes. Okay. So what I will do is you all guys all know that I like to do is I do like to um, I'll call the meeting to order, first of all. You need a second. Yeah, yeah uh, Jeff might need a second. Oh, no, I mean, do you need to second when you call a meeting to order? Oh, no, I just call it to order. <laughs> Actually, that's a trick question. I don't know if I need a second. I've never asked for a second, and, and I've never been in a meeting where anybody had a second calling into order. So we just uh, we we just keep going here. Did we do that on the ZBA? Yeah, do, do uh, ZBA? Do you do that? Yeah, we we just dive in. So <laughs> so anyway, and we'll see if we get 
Jeff back, but we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll go for it here. So I'm going to share my screen as I do tend to do. And so I'll share it for the purpose of looking at the agenda so we can adopt the agenda. Uh, so open the meeting, which we did, adopt the agenda, which I'll ask for a, a, a primary second for that. M minute status, I have sent everybody minutes. And um, so, so Jude, I wouldn't expect you to be weighing in on any minutes before tonight, really, because this is your first official meeting. So in any event, I did, I did send out minutes and we have skipped talking about them in this meeting, but at some point I'll send an email just says, hey, here's all the minutes and have everybody through email do respond to them. So um, we'll talk about our new member <laughs> who is officially the, he, here with us. And then I like to give everybody status on the laws in progress, including the Housing Oversight Task Force. CEA is not actually a law, but it's going on and I wanna make sure people know what's going on there. Regulating wireless, we've been kind of patient on that. Water supply protection, a lot of action going on there. Scenic overlay is what Connor had said that he wanted to review with everybody today. And we'll see how that goes. And then talk about the next meeting, which we always like to talk about status of laws in progress and whether or not we took a quick peek at the zoning reference document last time in light of our number now being seven. And it looked pretty good, but we can look at that again if we think we want to um, either at this meeting or at a future meeting. And then um, let's see. I also received, I'm liaison to Complete Streets, and when Complete Streets came to us to give a uh, give us an update of what they're doing, they said, well, how do we get zoning law changes in? And we said, well, if you provide us what you'd like us to do, we'll take a look, and then they did. So I do have a document I just sent out to everybody today that, um, that the Housing Oversight Task Force also has it, and some things could get folded in to the laws coming soon there. But anyway, we can talk about that at the next meeting if we want, and then talk about the proposed NCLI-1 law at some point if, if we want. So I'm just gonna scroll, it looks like I can scroll. Connor, Connor is on, hi Connor. Not sure if Connor can hear me. Oh, and Ed is on, fabulous. Okay, so all that is fabulous. Uh, that being said, do I have a, everybody who I'm expecting here is, is here. Do I have a motion to accept the agenda? <laughs> we have a we have a quiet but so moved. So moved. Yay, dude. I'll I'll second it. Uh, uh, all in favor of the agenda? Aye. Aye. I heard enough. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So okay. And that being said. Uh, I'll run through the first topics. The, the main topic was Connor wanted to talk about scenic overlay. So that's the main topic for tonight. But I'll give you updates on everything else and then move it on to, to Connor. So I want to officially welcome Jude. She's an official member of the Zoning Revision Committee and welcome. Delighted to have Jude as, as a member of our committee. And uh, so she did go through the formal process. She did get grilled, I think, uh, happily so. I think, it, I think it was a pleasant experience getting grilled by the town board, but um, she is she is official as of the last town board meeting. So, so yay, yay, Jude. Um, so welcome. Thank you. It's one um, T. <laughs> what, what's that? Two L's, one T. Two my L's, oh, two L's, one T. Well, let's fix that. Okay. So yay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I got it wrong. I did it backwards. Two L's, one T. There you go. Sorry about that, but I learn as I go along. And Connor is one N because he was quick to correct me on that. And I've tried I've tried to get that right since then. So um, so okay. So status of laws in progress. We continue to have the bi-weekly meetings on the housing oversight task force. We are expecting to see laws this month. I did speak with Bill McKenna and we do have J Jeff and I and also Michael are part of the Housing Oversight Task Force. We do have a meeting tomorrow because every other week we do have a meeting. And I talked with Bill McKenna and his understanding of the plan is when the, when the draft law comes in from the consultant, it will go to the town board first. And then there will be a town board meeting where there'll be a presentation and all groups instead of prioritizing and like the housing oversight task force 
which I'm calling hot force, by the way, to, to, to uh, make it shorter. The hot force made the rounds in January. Then if we want them to make a round, I'm sure they will. But the plan is that everybody who's interested will go to a town board meeting. I don't know which meeting that is yet. So that is, um, that's what's going on there. We're, we're definitely moving forward and the consultant has been uh, writing the law. So that's the status there. A critical, the Xena critical environmental area, we haven't really been talking about this here, but I wanted to bring it up because the, the Xena critical environmental area, it was a piece of work that the WEC was, had a very large part and the planning board had part of a part in it. I'm the liaison to the Woodstock Environmental Commission and the CEA, if you want to read it, is on the WEC page on the town website. They are asking, they want to know, okay, so there's a presentation in November on it at the town board meeting. When is this going to become adopted by the town board? It's not actually a law, but they did want to know when is, when is it going to get adopted. And a lot of people have said to me, it really ought to go with the Housing Oversight Task Force. So while waiting for that, there were some questions about the CEA. And... Well and there, there will be a town board presentation on March 8th of the WEC. There was a town board presentation in November. There's gonna be another one on March 8th. So I just wanna make sure everybody on this in this committee knows, because if you choose, you could go to that meeting and uh, if you have any questions about it. What I did do with the CEA, it's a critical environmental area, is the hope is it'll be protected the, the document is considered non-binding, but the planning board would use it to look at some things, but it's come to my attention that there is a seeker, there's a question on the short, on both the short and long environmental assessment forms asking, are you CEA, which could pop you into some more rigorous review uh, in some ways. And, um, but also there is a page and a half in the CEA document of recommendations. And I did share that because it has to do, you know, housing, we're putting an environment first. So I did share that with Kirk Ritchie and Deborah Dewan, who are the leaders of the Housing Oversight Task Force, and they've passed that to the consultant. So some of those things, even though it's considered non-binding, some things are common sense of things that might make sense. So we may see some CEA things turn up in the hot force documentation and proposed laws. We may not, but it's a hot item. I just wanted to share. There's going to be a at the March 8th town board meeting. There will be a s session with the WEC leading the discussion on the CEA. And it's also intended to be a communication to landowners. So it has to do with land use and we have to do with land use. So I did want to mention that. One question, one thing on that, um, Laura. Yes. Yeah, but, um, I was just speak with Peter Cross and he does, and in his opinion, it will be a law. It'll be a state law if it gets passed. Just like it's just like also the CEA is a state designated region, which has requirements within the DEC code. So okay. say it's not a law, it's not a town law, but if it gets approved by the state, it becomes a state law in a state regulated area. And being a CEA throws any development, in my opinion, and not the, in, in the opinion of a, of a um, property lawyer that I've spoken to, throws it into a type one seeker for any development within that area. Okay. So it is, to me, it's a, it's a, you know, as a landowner within this 2,290 acre definition of critical area, I am very concerned. It's, if you look at the, ter the current CEAs in, in Woodstock, they're less than five acres each. This is, this is a, you know, significant percentage of the town. Right. So, and, and I, I do, you know, hopefully this gets pushed, you know, the March 8th is the first time that there'll be presentation to any of the landowners. Right. Which also to me is a problem as a landowner in that area. Um, but um, I do feel strongly that the desires within the CEA are exactly the desires within the Housing Oversight Task Force Mm -hmm. And hopefully they can be folded together and we don't need a CEA because everything will be protected mm -hmm. with the zoning code. Right. Right. And that's what I heard about the other CEAs, that their needs were folded into the wetland watercourse law 
so there didn't need to be a separate um, thing there. But anyway, so good. But there are actually five CJs in Woodstock right now. Right. Okay. Four of them are state um, wetlands, and one of them is the area behind the or north of the um, um, sunflower complex, um, whatever that's called. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bradley Meadows, I think they call Bradley it. Meadows. Yep. Right. But why is this coming up? Well, it, it, it's actually, it had come up and maybe I should have been sharing this with everybody before because in the presentation in November, because of course I'm, I was at the town board meeting when it was presented, it was presented as a non-binding item. It's just guidance for the planning board. That's how it was presented. But Jeff, frankly, was the first person to say to me, you know, outside of this meeting, Jeff was the first person to say, it's not really non-binding. It really does make a difference. It makes a difference in your seeker because so there's a, a differing view of what people are saying about it. So it's coming up now because it's been more urgent. The present presenter in November, Ingrid Hackle, I think is perhaps how you pronounce the last name, had presented as a, as a non-binding binding item. It's just guidance. So that was the news before this, but Jeff said, hey, not exactly. It's bigger than that. And so people are waking up. But hopefully, um, yeah, so anyway, at least I'm waking up. So, so yeah, that's why it's coming up now is because now that people are discussing it, uh, people does, are realizing the impact. But doesn't this really have to do with the housing committee? I mean, I, I hear things, a lot of things, and there's a parcel over there they want to use possibly for an affordable housing uh, project, uh, right. at least. So, I mean, uh, I, I don't see why it's a purview of this committee. I mean, it should be the housing committee. Uh, get in, I mean, you're, you're worried about the WEC's uh, proposal for a critical environmental area in Xena, and there, it wouldn't be needed with the bundle of legislation that's coming out from the housing committees. So that's a, that basically it? But, well, it might not be. So all I know is the CEA, page and a half of recommendations was given to the consultant who is writing the housing law. And what we see back from her, we're not going to know until, uh, you know, sometime in March. So, so we'll see. But I want, but since it, since it could translate into zoning, I just thought that this committee ought to be aware of what's going on. So that's, um, I just wanted to cover the topic so everybody be aware. So, oh, okay. Um, I'll, I'll move on to the next. Hand up to, to oh, hand I'm up. sorry. Oh, if you have your hand up, yeah, you may. I can't see you when I'm sharing, so um, so feel free to speak up. So, who's got their hand up? It was me. Oh, I'm probably muted. Wait. Oh, Jude. Jude. Hey, thank you. Yeah, go ahead and. Okay. Um, this is actually going back to the Housing Oversight Task Force. I'm. I'm just. This is just clarification. I thought when they came to the, do a presentation for this committee, there was a discussion about when this committee would see the law and there was gonna be two weeks to review it, but I thought for some reason it was coming here before it went to the town board. It's going to the town board before it comes here. I, I'm, I, I don't recall the, I'd have to listen to the recording to hear exactly what was said because that was our last meeting, which was four weeks ago, but I don't recall anybody saying it would come here first, but. Uh, I, you know, we'd have to look at the recording. If you heard differently, you could be right. No, right. I could be, I could also be confused. I just know Actually, that. Actually, Jude, I think you were correct, but I think the plan changed. Okay. And I, I think the plan there changed. was a discussion about two weeks wasn't enough time to review it and. Yeah. Correct. And that was, that point was definitely brought up. Yes. So the plan uh, changed. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask why? I believe the plan changed because the Housing Oversight Task Force wanted to have a very large, significant presentation to basically everyone that's interested at one time, as opposed to taking pieces here and pieces, here, pieces there. I think they wanted to present it as one complete package, and it made sense to do that to the town board with other boards, other members of other boards being present to, to listen to it then too. Right, and the other, th I, I agree with that, uh, I agree with that answer. Because the other thing, too, is if they did take it to this committee and that committee and the other committee, everybody wants to see it right away and people are losing time with it. So by giving it to everybody all at once, everybody will see it at the same time. 
and everybody can start doing their reviews. So uh, if they did it in sequence, they'd have to pick who's first, second, and third. And nobody wanted to be third is the other thing. So, okay. So I can't see if hands are necessarily up. Does anybody else want to say anything on either of the first two topics? Okay. Um, regulate, regulating wireless. Uh, I did reach out to Andrew Campanelli, who, who sent a funny email. Uh, it's funny because he said he'd, He's expecting to have the law to us Wednesday. Um, he didn't exactly say what the date was. So I'm assuming it's Wednesday, two days from today. I just got the email today. I'm assuming it's two days from, from the day, but we'll see. All he said was Wednesday. So uh, we no, will see. He, no, he's finished the law and he's reviewing it. Okay. Well, and he said, and he had been sick for a little while too. But besides that, he had said he's also, and what I like about having Andrew involved with us is he's aware of current lawsuits and he's adjusting everything to the latest and greatest. So, so okay, so our fingers are crossed that we'll see it in, in two days. So that's the status of that. And I know we wanted at least two weeks to look at that and we'll see how many things we have thrown at us to, to be looking at at the same time. Water supply protection, I think is going really well. Uh, I'm the only person of this group who's on the group of seven, although Ed knows a heck of a lot about it because he was part of the first group that worked very heavily on it and got it written to begin with. And, um, and so I did send out to everybody in the water supply protection group, there's a group of seven, everybody has the, the law as it was, which we didn't change when we passed it along, is still pretty much intact except for there are about three paragraphs that each had a little tweak. So, um, but I know that Ed, you would have a copy because I sent that out. And there are the, the same map, Ed, that you saw is the map that is we're going forward with. But when the group of seven met, there were some people that had some questions. There, there's an area of Horsley Witten that has a line drawn around it. And if a property is just a little bitty bit in it, it didn't make sense to include it because that little bitty bit probably is not at risk anyway. So there was some question about you know, if a, if a property touches it, if you include the whole thing when itty bitty bit is in it, then you're really making somebody follow a whole law when they didn't really need to because they're they're only going to be doing stuff on stuff outside the line. So we do have a couple of people. I was happy with where the long line was drawn, but there were some people in this group of seven that just saw it for the first time and they wanted to dig a little deeper. And they so they're they're going to go do that. I think that everything is intact. They're just talking about if a property has part of it in and part of it out of this horsley witten line, which is the line, that's the, the line where we say inside it needs to be protected, outside of it we're not so concerned about, properties that straddle, it's a question of do you put the whole property in or take the whole property out? There was an agreement a long time ago that said we're not gonna try to cut a property in half because then nobody really knows where the line is, but if your property is either in or out, that's what we're doing. So in any event, our next meeting for water supply protection actually is going to be on March 9th. And so that should have given Steve Winkley enough time to look at these three small updates to the law. Ed, I'm always interested in your input, so you're certainly welcome to provide input on that. And we should have, if that group, there are three people out of that group of seven doing a deep dive in the map. So uh, I'll share with everybody, just like I've been sharing, I, I have everybody on this committee in the big email that I send out. And anybody's welcome to attend any of those meetings they want. I try to let everybody know what's going on um, where. Well, the mapping meeting is really just the three people often doing that. But the meetings that I have, I'm, I certainly invite everybody. So that's, um, that's that. So I, I think it's all intact. I think it's all looking good. We're just getting a couple of little details, but nothing's being thrown out. It's, it's all solid. So I can feel I, good I have, about it. Can I ask questions about this? Or is, I'm not yes. sure what this is, okay. So I'm looking at the um, modifications to this and they don't necessarily make sense to me um, in many different ways. Okay. Um, so clearly the concern is the usage of more water, correct? The, it, and what you might be using with that water, anybody that uses more water, there's a worry that they might be doing bad things with it, like putting pesticides down the drain or- Well, I mean, it's beyond that. So it's basically, in, if you're adding a bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, an outdoor usage is, you have to go to this kind of extensive special use permit, or if you increase the number of people using the space. So I guess my stupid question is, 
So if you have, if you get pregnant and you're gonna increase by like a kid or two, do you have to like get a special use permit? Well, it doesn't make sense to me that you that you're talking about usage of water without. I mean, so, so my, my my take on this, and I I made some suggested edits to this. If you if the usage of water is properly treated, what's the concern, right? And that that's the issue. So there's there's two issues in in the and the water and the water district well out of protection overlay zone. It's mm -hmm. the wastewater in the usage of, of new water, right? Those are the two things you need, need to worry about, right? right. The wastewater, if, if the wastewater is properly treated, there's no issue. So shouldn't the law be that the wastewater must be properly treated and you must show that the wastewater is properly treated in any development? Instead of uh, making it specific to if you do this or that or whatever, it doesn't matter what you do. If your wastewater is properly treated, then you should be able to do it. You just have to prove the wastewater is properly treated. Well, what does that mean by that. properly treated? That you have either a septic system or a um, septic system or sewer that takes the wastewater away and handles it. Everyone that had, if you have a septic system and you can show that the septic system supports the new usage, then what else do you need to do? That's yeah. that's the question, right? So you're, yeah, I, I think what you're asking is a valid question. And uh, I'll ask that question to Steve Winkley. So the changes that the group of seven asked for, my, I, I asked Steve Winkley, I'll be asking Steve Winkley his opinion on those. And, and Ed, I always appreciate you weighing, on, when, weighing in on things as well. So because we have advisors, we have a group of seven, but we also have advisors. So you've, you've raised a really good question. Laura? Yes. Can you maybe pull up that section? Because I read it and I may have misread it. I read it really quickly before the meeting. Okay. I thought that those things were not in requirement of a special use permit. Um, Can you maybe pull it up? Because I'm having... Uh, well, the quick, the quick yeah, question just... is, it's, it's a confusing language, Jude. There's a knot in the middle of it that people miss. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So what I so the quickest way for me to bring it up probably is to just give me a second. It's the version two. This is the one. Um so it was here, here, and here. So interior external improvements, renovations, and structural alterations or additions da, 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 that do not involve the creation of additional bedrooms. So at first said it's just if it, if you don't involve the creation of additional bedrooms, with the idea being, I think that if you so this is the exception. The yeah, special use permits, activities requiring special use permits. Uh basically any these, addition that you do that does not include a bedroom was the original thing. Now it's, it's not put a bedroom or a bathroom or a kitchen or outside usage or pools or ponds. So well, if, you, if, you're including, if you're including a bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, outdoor usage, showers, pools, or ponds, you must get a special use permit. Doesn't it say the exception of the following? Article? It says with the exception, yeah. So with so, the exception of the following uses, so if you do, yeah, so the, it's, it's a double negative. So you're saying you have to get an SUP except if you do this, but if you right. do this, except, you know, so if, so if you're not doing, but, but, so the thought is that you'd be, you would be having other water flowing through your property and including outdoor water usage, showers, pools, or ponds. So the thought is you would be having other water usage. And if you're going to have other water usage, have the SUP look at it to make sure everything is going to be properly handled. And as you say, Jeff, if you have the right sewer system or septic, then theoretically all is good. And theoretically, all these things would be good, but I think the idea of additional bedrooms means you're going to have more people using having in your in your right, building. And, and, and I, I have to go really quickly, and I'm sorry. I'm going to try to abbreviate my my statement on this, and I apologize okay. for being too quick. My my belief in this is that the purpose of the code here, the purpose, the intention here, is to make sure that you treat your water properly. So why don't we just put that in the code? Okay. Instead of making this, if you do this, or if you do that, if you do things that might, you know, because we could miss things by this, mm -hmm. you know, we could miss things. things like, hey, you've got triplets 
that come in right. or that you've, you've well, had, yeah. I'm, I'm serious, you can use more water if you have triplets, right? That's not in the code, but yet you're gonna use more water. So if you have, and another part of this is that many of those houses now have two people in them because mm -hmm. they've aged out. People have moved out of the houses. If a family moves in, they're gonna encourage more water use. They gotta prove that that more water use is treated properly in all cases. So by, by saying, by basing the, the code on, can you properly treat, treat wastewater, you, you cover all those things. And it's right. about can you treat the wastewater, not about yeah. what you do to your building. That, yeah. That's okay. my take on it. Well, I gotta tell you that down the street is the water wells for the whole town. Yes. Yes. And uh, I I can't see a thousand gallons of wastewater, you know, right down Dixon Avenue here. It just seems crazy. No so one's saying, saying there's a thousand gallons. I'm saying it's got to be properly treated. Well, anyway, that's what the, it said in the thing I got from uh, the housing um, committee there that that they said that the the library would be exempt from a, a, a thousand gallon um, limit on the water. The library really is less water than the office used. That's the case. The library is going to use less water than the office uses. I can't hear you. The, the library will use less water than the, than the office that was there is used. Well, I, that's good. I, I think we should look at it, see what its current use is. Right, Before and we, we've, we done that, that, we've done that, that David. we've done that, and the library has a lower usage than an office. Well, it's okay, they could, we could just go look at the records. Yeah, okay, gotta go, thanks. Okay, that, thanks, Jeff. So, okay, yeah, uh, any I, other, I, go I, ahead, I, go ahead, June. I mean, I've been real, really dense about this, but it, but the, the ex, I, this looks to me like this is an exception. To those rules because if you look at it any emergency activity that is immediately necessary for protection of life property and natural resources yeah it, 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 this is the word exception right here so yes yeah. yeah so these are exceptions so i'm not sure what he's saying yeah what, what he's saying is the exceptions are interior extra improvements that do not involve it's the double negative here Actually, an exception is these things but accessory structures that do not involve the creation of additional bedrooms and the and the committee wanted to add also bathrooms kitchens or outdoor water usage so Ed, you you were you were key from the beginning on this do you have an opinion on the words in red that the, that the water protect supply protection group of seven was hoping would get added i don't i don't care i just want a bigger area protected i don't i think it, they've uh, might as well not have this law so I think that the map has to be considerably larger. Otherwise, then, then, then the, the Horsley Witten. We we ha I was at a meeting where it was decided not to put the Horsley Witten uh, outline on the on the aquifer protection map. Now all of a sudden it's been reduced to the Horsley Witten map, like Ken Panza wants. But I I am. Whole, I mean, I don't see any reason to have this law. It's an ancient aquifer. We're protecting a 2000 year old water source that goes all the way down to the Camo and up right. and along, along that river. So if we don't protect that, I don't see any reason to, uh, you know, it's a waste of time. Well, well, we have protected everything that's over top of the aquifer. And your point is we should protect more but uh, so so it's, so we should maybe get with Steve Winkley and and talk about this a little more. I was going to say, what about the uh, the the Bearsville, uh, complex? Now they just you know uh, cut down a whole bunch of trees. Ah, right. And they're, and they're making um, I guess for. Uh, I guess for, put the affluent somewhere, and I guess that's what it's all about. They're making a big, uh, uh, you know, area that they want to have uh, cleared out to, uh, to do with wastewater. As far as I heard, well, I, I guess I heard they wanted parking. I, I heard that they were trying to clear it out 
because parking had to be on the street when they had a big event at the Bearsville Theater and that they wanted to have more parking areas. That, that's what I had heard, but I'm not in the building department, so I don't really know. I just know what I've heard. Well. Sounds like we're hearing different things. They didn't have the permit. They didn't, wasn't at the building department. Okay. Uh, yeah, cutting. Yeah, okay. So we're kind of off track a little bit for for our topic. So so any, anyway, uh, Ed, well, would you not, I don't think it's off topic. It's a question okay. of how much affluence you're going to put into the ground here. Right. Well, okay. I mean, there's, there's another neighborhood uh, project going up there somewhere. You know, so it applies to the other, you know, the other place as well. Okay. Okay. So th those are, are good good questions. Good questions. Oh, um, but let me, oh, go ahead, Jude. No, I just, I'm late to the game. So I'm just trying to be clear. So Ed, you're saying there was a map that encompassed more of an area that has now been reduced? Unless, uh, I went to a meeting of, Steve Winkley's been on vacation. He comes back on March 1st. So he's supposed to answer the criticism about the uh, thousand gallons and uh, the language being proposed. And he's going to answer that. But the issue is the aquifer protection line inside of which all properties have to obey this law. And if it's going to be reduced, there, this is it. Well, th this, this is the detail. And what the group of three was going to do was they're looking at, we, we drew it. And this is what you saw when, when you and Judy, when you, Judy Kerman, and I met with Steve Winkley, this, yes. is, what, this is what we were looking at. So yes. we can see the aquifer and the aquifer, any property that's on, that touches the aquifer is included. And then the Horsley Witten Mitten, and we call this the mitten because this is the line, the Horsley Witten piece of work that research the analysis that was done that said, and the wellheads are right about over here. The Horsley Witten said, this is the area you need to protect. If you want to protect your wellheads, protect this stuff here, which is this black outline, looks a little like a mitten. But so, and then what we had said was, well, what if you have properties like this one up over here, we have a little triangle. The, the driveway's here. It's not like they're going to do something in this triangle. So does that really need to be in it? Because it's just a little bit of, is in it. And then you got one over here to the left. We have a little sliver. Well, is somebody really going to encroach on the, the mitten is what Horsley Witten said. This is the area that ought to get protected. But the well, Horsley, yeah, but... <laughs> Horsley Witten is not the Bible. It's it's. It's an estimate. It's it's. I mean, there there needs to be a buffer around it that's somewhat substantial, and I think that should probably be at least another property line or so. I mean, I, I it's I I understand what you're saying, but it's easy to sit here and like you know trace the finger your finger along the line of the map, but mm -hmm. you know it's, you know the gravity that dictates where water runs doesn't respect that line, and you know. And, and also, when when we wrote the, the contours of the scenic overlay districts, we had regular rules written in to show when a property is half over the scenic overlay line mm -hmm. and half under how to how to how to determine uh, the, the zoning law on such a property. And you could do the same with this, a, a simple paragraph that's, that says if a if a uh, uh, if the boundary line severs a property this is the rules you know that well and, and and i can say that uh judy was looking at perhaps doing a percentage and and steve winkley said well don't put a percentage in the law so we were going to look at it and have this have this be our guide knowing where the aquifers are and knowing where horsley witten said to protect this area with that as the guide that's what we were going to protect and there are only about four or five properties that have an itty bitty bit in and mostly out. And so we were going to not include those. And this one over here, itty bitty bit in and mostly out where what's going to, what are they going to put in this area that's in any way that's going to be hurting the aquifer. So that's why we'd excluded those. We're only talking about like four or maybe five properties. So, so this is what it looks like now. 
And well, if it, okay, if it's like this, the way, way I heard it interpreted is it was going to be the strict Horsley and Whitley no, no. protection of the three no. wellheads. And then no. if, you, if you do no. that, then I, I don't think there's any reason to do this law. Because this is an ancient aquifer. This is 2,000 years of water to serve the next 100 years of downtown Woodstockers. Right, right. And so we're protecting all of that under the Cuomo. That's what's over on the right. All this under the Cuomo. And then the and then the mitten. The, the mitten, and if the property has a substantial amount within the mitten, it got included. The only ones that are currently, but again, it's the group of, it's Judy Kerman and two other people are doing a bit of a deep dive. But no, we're not taking out stuff they, they might tack out this one up here where the property really is up here and it's got this itty bitty bit. So that's the the thought. But I appreciate your uh, and I always appreciate your thoughts and your input and um, and your I, thought that being cautious I, is good. Well, it's my view is to make the aquifer protection map as big as possible mm -hmm. to protect this ancient glacial till. It's, it was dumped in there by a receding glacier, the last glacier that was in Woodstock. And mm -hmm. so we need, this will provide downtown water centuries after we're gone. So I, I, I'd say the same thing. I mean, like I met, said earlier, I mean, if anything, we should, if there were language that said, you know, if you are within, you know, this far of this line that we are all looking at right now, mm -hmm. that maybe some less, uh, I don't maybe there just needs to be a review process, not necessarily I maybe the WEC, somebody, I don't know, comes in and just says, What are you gonna do? Where's it gonna be? And and on a case by case basis. I mean it's not that it's just not that many places in the first place to carve out a I think any blanket exemptions. And I'm gonna see if I can find um So, so Ed, at this point, I have this is the map that you had provided. Yeah. A and it's and the line is pretty much the same, although your map th this map did cut across some properties, but your map did kind of follow the mitten as well. Right. So, um, I, I have no objection to the map you just showed me before. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. So, and people aren't going to be tossing out a whole ton of stuff, but they, they're going to relook and they're going to figure out percentages to make sure that we've been fair in terms of things that we may not include. Is it a, like 20% or 15% that's in and majority out? But no, nobody's asking, nobody is saying, no, nobody wants to put a, a bunch more of these, you know, the, the red things are going to stay red with the possible exception of one thing here that's almost almost all out. So I have no, uh, objection. The other I have no so. objection to that. Laura, may I just yeah. put in two cents? Sure. Like, I, I prefer uh, leaving properties in versus taking properties out because they are uh, areas that could be developed in the future. And so if they're out now, they're not likely to go back in in the future. Well, that, that, that's very oh. true, but 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 yeah. then, for example, with this one right here, with the, only the itty bitty corner is in, how likely is this property owner going to put something in that corner? Their driveway is over here. It looks like the it looks like a driveway. Well, that's the name. neighboring property to um, the IPA where the bowling alley was, isn't it? Uh, not not sure. Yeah, not sure. close. Yeah, so and, and, really, and, and, it really and, just depends on the use. I mean, we can't predict what could be right. done there, and just having it in there and subject to either some set of review or whatever <laughs> is just being extra cautious. I completely yeah, agree. I don't think there's any harm in being extra cautious. So that's my two cents. Thank you, Connor, for okay. using that word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't mean to interrupt. If I did, I apologize. No, no. Okay. All right. Then. Okay. Well, I appreciate everybody's, and this is why I brought it up, is I, I like to share what's going on, and I like to know what everybody's thinking. So, okay. So, all that being said, and we're, mo and we're moving along, so I want to get to Connor's stuff. So, scenic overlay is the, is the really big topic for today, and so um, I think all that conversation was good. Um, and with all that being said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen.
And then Connor, you said that you wanted to talk about scenic overlay and I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Hey, bear with me one moment. You guys can hear me okay, I take it, right? I had yes. Issues. <laughs> um, so I guess I should share my screen then. Well, uh, unless you send us a document. Well, I can, if you like, I can uh, forward it to you, but no, no big deal either way. All right. Well, you can share it and then, and then, well, at some I point can, forward it. You guys see? Uh, yes, it's itty bitty print. No, that doesn't, that spreads. You need to large, increase the font size. That or zoom. Help. Can you, can you, uh, are That's not are doing you, anything? So you're looking at an oh that's that helped it's the, it's it's a little bit a little bigger now. I I can kind of read know, it. I think I know what the problem is. Uh, I'm I, I do apologize. I think I mentioned before. Um, I work out of my recording studio um, when I do these meetings, so the aspect ratio on that monitor is a little different. Let me just try something else really quick. Um, I do apologize, bear with me. Well, it looked like you had it in a Gmail. Is it something you can forward to us? Oh, uh, can you see yay, this? okay, that's that's nice and big. All right, uh, can I back it out a little bit? Is that okay? Well, I can read it, but I can't speak for everybody. How are we, how's that look, everyone? Oh, Any objections? The <laughs> sentence. All right, so um, I'm just going to run through really quick. We've seen a lot of this, I think, um, already. We've certainly discussed all of it. Um, but, you know, our intention was to uh, bolster and ult ultimately really clarify uh, a lot of language already existing in the scenic overlay. Um, like you mentioned in the email, uh, we got a chance to review this particular document with the planning board and there were a couple of suggestions which um, I and Ed um, incorporated, some of them pretty minor, including if you guys can see right here, um, minor things like changing the word excluding decks and pools to including decks and mm -hmm. pools. Uh, basically, the thinking was uh, it seems like the kind of thing where while it doesn't make it into you know the plan necessarily, people might be a little uh, excited to cut down trees to get a little sun on mm -hmm. those uh, particular types of areas and to give them mm -hmm. emphasis as opposed to uh, excluding them made a lot of sense. Um, so uh, let's just roll through the changes. And uh, if anyone wants me to well, slow I see, down. I see up above, right at the very top of what's showing your screen, you have a 300 and a 150 question mark. So it looks like you were thinking of making a change there. So, so are we? Are your changes noted by underlines? Is that what we're looking for? Is the yes. underlines? Are the, are the yeah, underlines. Okay. Every all new language is underlined, including the preamble at the top. Okay. Yes. Um. So, uh. Well, I, if uh, I, sorry. The so I'll I'll just go through the whole thing and uh, anything that is highlighted again I will or underlined I will. Uh, touch upon if anyone wants to stop me or see something not uh new that they want to focus on please feel free uh, okay, well, well, before, before you go away then so usually 1200 feet is um mushy because i thought you know so we changing it is not always 1200 feet because the word usually becomes mushy there are there are two there's two districts one on a ohio mountain road that's at a thousand feet mm -hmm. And uh, I think I forget where the other one is. There's there's two thousand foot, mm -hmm. or no one thousand foot, one eleven hundred foot, and one and the rest are twelve hundred feet. Uh, yeah. So I and I think that is um, something that is delineated um, in I, maybe Hudsonia. I can't remember, but Ju Judy is able to pull those districts up all the time. So we do have existing mm -hmm. uh, boundaries uh, for those areas that we go off of. 
So okay. um, the intent of the scenic overlay district is to protect the historic viewscapes of mountain escarpments, steep hillsides, ridge lines, and forested sections of Woodstock above a certain elevation, usually 1,200 feet. It is in this historic, aesthetic, environmental, and long-term economic interest of the town of Woodstock to protect and preserve these lands and forested areas contained within the scenic overlay district with additional zoning regulations. Okay. I already touched upon um, the including, including. deck rules. And <laughs> um, now my, uh, the, the 150 question is, is sort of, uh, that's where we landed actually a couple years ago as a planning board um, in terms of what we thought felt more appropriate because there is actually a lot you can do with 300 square feet and depending on what elevation you're building it at um you know 300 square feet that's a bedroom <laughs> as far as i'm concerned uh at least by my uh, own living standards um so uh we decided that lowering it to 150 uh would uh cover any meaningful additions that might mm -hmm. um either not only increase the um not only have an increased potential and perhaps tree cutting but also likely expand upon glazing um mm -hmm. on already existing houses which is also um a concern so um we move down to 260-66 all owners of parcels located entirely or part in the scenic overlay district seeking to develop a parcel shall apply to the planning board for a special use permit and undergo all requirements of obtaining an SUP. All applicant application forms provided by the building department for development in the scenic overlay district shall have a check off box certifying that the parcel is in the scenic overlay. And just I'll, again, as I run through this, that was also something that had come up specifically at the planning board multiple times. So uh, we decided to include that here. So, so, so doesn't the next sentence say the same thing? If your sentence above it says you're, you're going to have a checkbox to the parcels in the scenic overlay, the application will have a checkbox to be checked if parcel entirely or in part located above 1,200 feet. So that's kind of the same, saying the same thing. If you're over 1,200 feet, you're in the scenic overlay, except for those two exceptions that Ed mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, what do you think, Ed? We could, do you think we can nix that or uh, should we yeah, add? Take out the redundancy. All right, well, I will... I'll, I'll noted. Uh, this is, of course, the email. So, uh, like, um, but moving, it, consider it, consider that uh, struck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Now, uh, bear with me one second. We got the hundred and fifty and three hundred again. Yes. Yeah, so that that here, it's less of a question, and we're gonna if again, if everyone agrees, when we at the end of this discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm, the 150 is really what I'm shooting for. Yeah. Um, okay. What we've been shooting for. So, uh, now, so I'm jumping down to the to the to the bold. So is that new also? So the is the bold new? Yeah, that is uh, really more to do with the planning board um, procedure. But basically, mm -hmm. what we were preempting and writing in the expectation that applicants provide us with drone photography. Uh, so mm -hmm. to this end, the planning board may require the applicant to submit recent aerial drone footage and or drone photos done by a legally licensed drone operator of the entire area impacted prior to the creation of the proposed development. An additional drone footage to be filmed after completion of the development in the scenic right. overlay district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and we and and just to touch on it before we move on, we've been doing this now for the better part of a year and a half. I'm proud mm -hmm. to say I was the first person to uh, <laughs> submit brought, my own yeah. home to this process. Uh, mm -hmm. Dave Lax came, flew a drone up in the air, took some beautiful photos, and uh, we've been using it as the uh, as the standard. Mm -hmm. And it's been very helpful and has really uh, allowed us to get uh, a case by case scope for every application mm -hmm. okay. um, so you seem to have uh, two two starts with the word elevation is, is that a whole sentence uh, uh, uh yeah, then go down oh, then push your cursor here. down the, the number two elevation in question to be seen from anywhere beyond the boundaries that's like a partial sentence i didn't know if something's missing there hmm. uh, well let's have a look the actual code but that 
isn't bold, so I'm inclined to say we did not add that. But, but it looks like it's not a whole sentence, though. Yeah. Sorry, bear with me one sec. Go what ahead. are you talking about? This is uh, this is uh, copied off the zoning law. The, the beginning of that sentence is up above. The, this is the page heading. Oh, yeah. OK. Potential for the elevation in question. Gotcha. Thank this you. This is okay. from the law. Yeah, okay. I was just Thank I just I just got there. Sorry, my little mini copy of the zoning code here. <laughs> so, um, OK, th thanks. Ed. That, that makes sense. So for all lands purchases, uh, land purchases located within the scenic overlay district in Woodstock, the realtor handling the purchase shall provide a document from the town of Woodstock for the applicant to sign and notarize, confirming they have been informed of the scenic overlay standards as outlined in 260-66, and that violating these standards at any time may cause their special use permit and certificate of occupancy to be revoked. So, so the question I would have there is, I see sign and notarize. I know that um, when I've dealt with, I don't think when I've dealt with realtors, which hasn't been a whole ton in my life, but I don't remember ever having to get stuff notarized. So that's kind of like a new thing. The signing I get, but the notarizing is, um, that's like an extra step that I'm not familiar with people having to get things notarized when they, when they, because the realtor hands you a bunch of stuff, sign this, sign that, sign the other thing. A and I didn't think that too many things had to be notarized. That's that's kind yeah. of a new thing. Could because, it be signed? Because it, the planning board is faced with an onslaught of uh, development in the scenic overlay. And if the realtors are required to, if, to, if the owner, new owners are required to do a notary, it really, puts into their memory that they can't allow their contractor right. okay. to willy nilly do something. Right, okay. And, and really they, that's what this whole section is about is uh, may, is just establishing the earliest, most, uh, mm -hmm. most confirmable verification that these laws are um, known to the applicant that mm -hmm. I think we can reasonably get. Because to be honest, you know, we're not talking about, you know, I it, I don't I know it's an extra thing, but it, it's not, I don't think it's burdensome. You know, we're asking yeah. them to I think it's probably more difficult to uh, hire a drone photographer than to uh, just, you know, walk down to the clerk and get something notarized. Yeah. Well, I do. I do agree. I agree with that. And I and I see I do understand the point, which is if somebody's got to go get something notarized, it's not just this really giving you a stack of stuff, sign this, sign that, and you're like half asleep and you sign everything. Yeah. If you have to get to take it to the notary, you're going to pay attention to this thing. So, so it is going to force them to pay attention. Um, and, and we'll see what the legal advice is about, you know, but I, yeah. I it's, you know, it, it will make them pay attention for sure. Um, so, I, and again, just to keep things moving, because I know we like to end as soon as possible. Um, the probe, uh, I'll skip this uh, to say that this is incur the, we have the prohibition of development along the ridge lines and discouragement of development in other visually prominent locations so that development is as vis visually inconspicuous as possible when seen from a distance and from lower altitudes and which respects the tree lines, forest canopies, and the intrinsic value of trees in the scenic overlay. Now that is, I think, uh, nice and emphatic. It's the, in terms of stating intent, uh, but... Uh, well, 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 don't go away. I have a comment for you. Move on. Before we move on, so shall we? Yeah, or... before, no, no before, before you scroll up, before you scroll beyond that. So the issue that... I would like to see the language there be more clear from the standpoint that the issue, when I was talking to people about what happened at Valley View Way, I think I'm getting the name right, Valley View Way, and some people said, well, they only took out the trees they had to take out to get their view. So when you say as visually inconspicuous as possible, my view of that is if I can see your building, and if you could have done something different so I don't see your building, then you didn't. Then you weren't as inconspicuous as possible. Somebody else's point, you know, interpretation of this said, "Well, they only took out the trees they needed to take out to get their view, 
and this doesn't make it clear the way it's written and is that and that's the issue so, with the current law the current law does not make it clear um so we go on to extrapolate that in section g section g is okay. really the meat of this uh whole section now well not entirely but here I'll, i'm going to skip down to that so you tell me if you think this covers it um the minimizing of tree cutting which is where which i think we uh covers the forcing it, um this up here though maybe we can make them a little bit more synchronous um g the minimizing of tree cutting applicant is expected to avoid any non-essential tree cutting modification or removal in the visible canopy of the scenic overlay this includes but is not limited to clear cutting topping limbing or practices that would harm the health of these critical trees and then it goes on further to define non-essential should be understood to mean having no fundamental impact on the buildability of the lot or the safety of existing structures where all other measures have been explored and exhausted um and can, can, can we say that if you're doing it just to get your view that that's not included I mean, that, that's the thing is he, you wanna, people you, people I mean, twist and, sorry, I'm sorry. You know, you, you, please, please. I'm sorry. There's a little delay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So, so people are twisting the words around. I mean, that's the thing. I just want to make sure people can't twist the words around because they do twist around and they have, and, and I'll tell you the, um, the, the, this, the spokesperson for the Valley View way, he came in and after they chopped those trees, he said, oh, that's so the trees can breathe better. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the thing is, the, the uh, you know, for people to twist things around and say, if you take a 40 foot tree and lob it off at the 20 foot mark so we can breathe better. So somebody's building a whole line of garbage that's trying to say this was really better. This was well, really better for the tree. It can what, breathe better. Well, so I just want to make sure people well, can't twist things around. What kind of language do you propose then? Uh, well, I think it's good. I think I like what you added there. That you know, so it's, it's saying minimizing tree cutting, uh, limited to clear, you know, and clear cutting has its own definition. People yeah. say, oh, well, you didn't clear cut. It wasn't. It wasn't an acre, and you didn't do this much of an acre. So, so clear cutting has its own definition. But topping, well, limiting, or practices. So that's all good stuff. Um, now, if I could hop in, just because I I see what you're saying. You want you think that just kind of like we went to including decks and pools. You think that needs to be specifically lined out my suggestion would be to go in section d and which respects the tree lines forest lines and intrinsic values of trees in the scenic overlay district period or well, maybe I say preserves can i say preserves rather than which, which respects which preserves tree lines yeah because um, respect yeah. people might so maybe preserves it, it, it's just that as you can probably tell i was a little frustrated with that valley view way and the spokesperson yeah. and and how nobody stood up and say, I mean, I said, I said you're, I didn't, I forget what I said exactly, but I did say I didn't agree with them. Um, so, so just to just to ask, and then let's just say we turn this right here into a comma uh, uh, and then change the value, oh, no, mm -hmm. not even a comma, but well, uh, well, well, essentially it, it saying of, that it, the, the uh, acquisition or improvement of, of an applicant's view is not considered well, well, I'll tell you, Well, I'll tell you what. I know you said you couldn't change this because it's an email. You can change it. Forward it, and you can make the changes we're talking about right here what we're looking at. So if you forward this email, then you can make changes to what we're looking at. I'm making notes. I'll make the changes. The, All right. The, okay. Do you want that at the end of D, or do you want that at the end of part of G? Well, well I think uh, it's, I'm it's kind of. I think G, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, because that's really uh -huh. where we're covering the definition. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll I'll stick a sentence based on what Laura said. Yeah. And, and I and definitely I agree with her on replacing um, respects with preserves. Preserves. That's, yeah, that's definitely that's, that's a, a good a good uh, suggestion. So th thank you, <laughs> thank you. Well, I was really frustrated by the shenanigans going on with that Valley View way. So, um, and I just learned from that how people are twisting things around. I just noticed we do have here the aerial drone footage again in H, and I imagine we can probably it looks to be the same, so we can probably have that in either place. 
Um, All right, I'll make. Uh, but, but I, I kind of like it in, uh, in uh, one. I guess that'd be one B. All right. I, but well, I, I think got... we're having good discussion here, and you'll be showing this to us again, Connor. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're having some good discussion. I'll want to look at it again because I, uh, you know, I'm not a snap decision maker. I kind of like the to, especially with all the value view way you know, shenanigans that went on, I, I want to have a chance to see the next pass of it after you make a few tweaks and kind of, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm confident that after this uh, round of uh, stuff, we're going to be ready to submit. I mean, we like you said, I've been obviously chomping, chomping at the bits to get a, s some legal advice on this. And I think yes. you know, it's, yeah. it, but, it's really time to do that. So, if, but, but so I, but I, I, I like, I like what you've done, if I may say, I what I really like about what you've done is you, you, you haven't had to rewrite the whole thing, but you're really pinpointing where areas to change. So I, I love your approach. I think your approach is great. We're just talking about some tweaks, but I love your approach. And I think you've really, um, you know, you, you've really hit on some key points pretty concisely. So I think well, it's, it's well done. Well, thank you. And of course, Ed's. Well, we, and we, <laughs> we ended, we entered comments from members of the planning board too. I mean, this is uh, a, a bunch of people offered suggestions and and Connor and I structured it to reflect those concerns. Yeah, that and, and that was a great discussion too. Um, yeah. I, I've been looking forward to that for a year or so now. Um, so <laughs> if, if we can keep going, just so, you know, yes. like you said, we want to get through this and then we'll have sure. our notes and stuff. The following uses and activities are prohibited in the scenic overlay clear cutting as part of a commercial logging operation, except as provided in da -da -da. and all non-essential tree removal or topping limbing of trees in any parcel located within the scenic overlay district. Okay, I got two comments there before you go on. So yeah. non-essential again needs to be clearly defined. And well, the other thing but, well, but you, that being yeah. said, we we did just define it in section G. Uh, oh, like, okay. Well, as we long as to, people as long as people who are reading that section remember to go back to the other section. The, well, the other well, you think we should include the definition again because I uh, that that was the point of section G is to say specifically non-essential. Here's a question for you. Here's the question for you. In um, section G, should we change that sentence to say any reference to non-essential in this section should? No, no. But well, I think that what you might do when you say non-essential further on down, can you point back to where you defined it, or is this section short enough you think people well, remember? If you want to waste, you can you can add the sentence again if you're worried. No, I I wouldn't I, I I wouldn't be totally redundant. But well, I that's all right. And part of this is I'm seeing this for the first time. I'm not able to like go back and forward and back and forward because I'm just kind of seeing it when, when Connor shows it. But the other thing I do want to say though is make sure that you've read the definition of clear cutting because you will tend to throw out the term clear cutting. And like they said over at Bearsville, oh they clear cut. Well they sh they cut all the trees. That's true. Yeah, but, is but it they clear didn't. cutting. Is it no, clear it's cutting? Not legally clear cutting. So the, meet the definition. They're using that colloquially, which is why, again, and we've had members of the tree committee say they'd like to apply these standards broader than the scenic overlay. And that's a whole nother question because Bearsville is not in the scenic overlay. So while it's not right. entirely relevant to this conversation, your point is very well taken. Yeah. Yeah, because you're throwing out the term clear cutting and it might not be the best term in, in this case. That, that's all. It, well, and, 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 I suppose um, that is why we, again, expanded in section G and again, repeat it. We did repeat here. Right. Specifically, right. All, is that non -essential? all right. non essential tree removal or topping and limbing of trees in any parcel. And I mean, there is not much more you could do to a tree aside from just poison it. And I feel that even that is covered in section G or practices that would harm the health of these critical trees. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I want to, I want to kind of look at this, like when you get it all done and I want to look at it and backwards and forwards. And so, yeah. okay. But I think Did you'd have a question. I do. And I, I don't know what the answer is, but I know, didn't the town lose a lawsuit up in Raycliffe? when somebody cut down a whole lot of trees and the law was too vague. So I'm just wondering that non-essential, and I understand I understand what you're doing by clarifying it, but do you have to enumerate it? Do you have to say, can remove no more than 
5% of trees of this size or something that's like very concrete that somebody could go out and count? Well, here's, here's part of it too, is that everyone, there is a certain amount of trees you're allowed to cut down a year and it's, it, it's sizable. Um, but what is, what, what I think the, ne- this is sort of an initial, I, I, I like to think of this as an initial phase of this whole thing. I mean, the ZRC, you know, we're going to go through a bunch of our, I guess what I'll call long-term agenda in these items. Uh, but we had discussed earlier what happens when that's all over, and I don't think I don't think anything in our mission or you know precludes us from coming back to, you know, give things another look. And one of the things that's going to take a lot of time, and this language and all of this stuff can be put into uh, action before that happens, is to get a actual photographic. Um, I guess what you could call sort of a survey or a record making of the scenic overlay of the view shed. Um, And to not necessarily, this was something Peter brought up. We discussed briefly, not necessarily just to create a view shed district, but to uh, delineate um, very clearly what these protected trees are and having applicants look at language like this and feel they need to come to us in reference immediately is I think going to help that process. But what I, to answer your question, what I ultimately want to have happen is like, there will be based on the combination of this language, drone photography, and this someday uh, getting this record together, that there will just be a clear as clear as the scenic overlay elevations laid out, these are the trees on your property that you can't cut. Everything else you can cut, you know, and you can do what you need to do with and what is legally allowed to. But this here is the view shed and this needs to be preserved. Does that make, does that answer it? Yeah, I understand what you're saying in terms of you know, making having an inventory basically of, of all the <laughs> Yeah, an inventory. It's a good I, I one. Get, I get that, but I'm just, you know, I'm I'm looking at this that, you know, because sadly, we all know that people are going to do what they're not supposed to do. Yeah. And right? we and, yeah. And so, so how can the town prevail in that instance with language that is and I don't know that language exists that can be that specific. But do, do you know what I'm getting at though if there were something that you could really hang your hat on. That well, and, and again, and again, eventually, it's going to mean delineating the uh, some some kind of lines on a map or being able to composite the inventory against the individual parcel. Um, because if we what we if if we say five percent or just just to go off of that, not that I'm saying that's like your you know, right, right. but if just like that right away. It doesn't tell me anything except I can cut this many trees or not where they are and you know what it means. So what the what the like I said, uh, the aim of most of the work I did was to clarify and bolster what was already there, uh, because what the base the basic of it is if you even if you draw back up to section G, see this right here, that was it. <laughs> right. That was section G. Right. So now we, section G is not just this sort of limp wristed uh, prerogative. It's a definition, it's a reference point uh, for the type of, you know, activity we're talking about. So going beyond that, I, I do believe what you're talking about achieving is sort of the next phase of the evolution of our, not just this law, but but how we implement it and, and procedures in other places like the planning board. Um, so I, I'm gonna keep going if, if that's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going ahead about the $5,000 per day. So if somebody did this, they, they'd own, I'm sorry, let me get my thing right. Divided by five. You know, that'd be $35,000 a week. No, no, somebody would owe in, in 200 days, which is less than a year, they'd owe a million dollars. Yeah. 
<laughs> now, and again, what we um, now uh, it looks like it didn't make it in, and but my um, there is an edit in here. If I could say, Ed, one of the things that I had submitted was uh, shall be punished by a fine of up to five thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, because I was just, I, I, I mean. As a town board member, I, I'm just not going to go approve something that's going to put somebody in the in bankruptcy. So, and I know we keep saying all these people have a ton of money. That not everybody has a ton of money, and sometimes people spend all the money they have on their property. Yeah. So yeah. we can't always assume these people have a lot of money. Some of them do, but now, you know, I can't as a town. I, I would, I, I would, as a town board member, I, I, I couldn't vote yes for that. Because now here, but here's all right. I I, I hear you, but let's in, in, let's, in less, let's in less than a year. They in two hundred days, which is like sixty percent of a year, they'll owe a million dollars, and, and yes. that's now that's okay. Nuts. So so if we move, if we if we assume for a moment, because it, I'd intended for this to say uh, up to five thousand dollars per day, that but, but, is but, now now again, that is something that can that leaves a a wide range open one that is applicable you know in a lot of dec uh, areas you know for us to assess the type of damage we're talking about because we are this is when you think about your average person working and living in woodstock cutting down the wrong tree should not cost you five thousand dollars per day um and um the part after it is really important, pending active and approved remediation efforts. As long as they're coming to the table, as long as they are actively in talks with whoever the lead agency is uh, to do this, then that fine shouldn't apply. But if we have another, I don't know if I'm allowed to name applicants in here, but if we have another uh limit pretty much if we have another person with bottomless pockets who throws a big you know shiny metal roof on his house cuts down all his trees and then wants to fight us tooth and nail that at, like really that's still a drop in the bucket so we i i think if we assume again that this says up to five thousand dollars per day pending active and approved remediation efforts um i would the only thing I think I would add to that, um, uh, is maybe something clarifying attendance. Attendance or, or, or the actions or what they're doing, because the thing is they don't have control over when a remedi effort, remediation effort has been approved. So they exactly. might have sub submitted a remedi remedi remediation plan but they don't have control of when it gets approved. And so to charge them whatever amount per day. And the other thing is it says shall be, you know, it doesn't say can be, it says shall be punishable by a fine of $5,000 per day. So uh, anyway, I, again, I, up to, up to that, is, that's going to, that's, well, per, that's what we're planning to submit. Yeah. So okay. We, so, so we're going to need, we're going to need to see this again. So, so you're making, Ed's making comments, you're making changes. We'll this, need to see this, this is, again. What I would suggest is we again we add something like five thousand up to five thousand dollars per day, uh, attend pending the the ongoing attendance of active attendance towards or active and approved remediation effort. The idea is no one should get a, a dollar of fine if they sh if they're showing up to these meetings and in good faith just like the people from the last thing they did their damage yeah and that was annoying and it became a, a fuss but ultimately i asked him will are you willing to do something and he said sure you know yeah. you just had to add, and, and and but he was there every time it's when right. they stop showing up right, right true but then the other thing too part of the value view way part of the issue was frankly the building department gave them approval to remove the trees that were already down and, and there was nothing that went okay, back to yeah. say who brought the trees down. So, yeah. so they were, so they actually dive you away when they removed the trees, they were approved to do that. And there was also confusion because somewhere in the law says cutting down trees over six inches, you, you can't do it. And they said these trees were under six inches, but they're in the scenic overlay. And the scenic overlay also says don't cut down non essential trees. 
so there was a there was a bunch of confusion too so at, at some point we're going to want to make sure the building department reads this and get their take on it but but in any event for this to be as for zrc to, to put this forth as a law so you know this is your first pass showing it so i'm expecting to see it again so, so what, what and what but what do you want to see clarified because to because in my opinion i've had i've seen numbers you know in this area that go up to ten thousand dollars per day depending on the scale of the violation so i'm like five thousand dollars today to me is what is even in my limited scope you know the worst thing you could possibly imagine like just the absolute worst and and a and a bad faith applicant you know well, i'd say let's let's uh, put the up to in there and then add a clarifying uh, uh, part of a sentence at the end of the five thousand dollars and then resubmit it at our next meeting and, then right, we'll, that, and we'll do the other changes we talked about in the taking out of that section that's been doubled and and get this back into better shape yeah. sounds yeah. good jude I'm sorry for keeping throwing things up, but I, you know, I just, so for example, somebody comes to the planning board, they get their site plan approval, the SUP for their scenic overlay, then they go ahead and they cut down trees. And then they come back to you and like, oh yeah, we have a plan. You know, they're going to plant, you know, they've taken down 50 foot trees and they're going to plant a six foot tree. <laughs> Is, you well, know what I'm saying? There's, 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 there's that that to me would be an easy guess. all right so so if we can continue though i there okay. is a, a part of this we have not gotten to yet which is coming right up okay. um commencing or engaging in tree removal modification okay so we just did that now this is one of the uh again i think this end of it is semi-critical in terms of you know we can hire professionals but i don't and, and i can I just go back prior to receiving or or prior right. to and after receiving a special both include both? I'm sorry, where what are we talking about you right going now? Going back to, I just have gone back to the commencing or engaging in tree removal modification, any parcel to see prior to receiving. What about after receiving it? Um. Well, that's a good point because we're assuming somebody's jumped in before they got a special use permit. No, no, no. That's but, a good, that's a good point. So we can yeah. we could honestly just delete prior to receiving a special use permit entirely, uh, and say commencing or engaging in tree removal modification on any parcel in the scenic overlay district for. Uh, well, if, unless it's approved. If it's approved by the SUP, then you can do it. But if it's not approved by the SUP, you can't do it. And, uh, so commencing or engaging in unapproved tree removal modification on any parcel in the scenic overlay district um, shall be punished by a fine of five thousand dollars up to five thousand dollars per day pending active and approved remediation okay. efforts that's uh, not including the language will come up with to clarify you know that that when that fine is applied um, but if I can just, because we're almost done here, and I think that, and this is this is really that phase. This is the hardest part. Is what for whatever reason, you know, the damage is done, you know, and we have to mitigate it to the best of our abilities. How is it arbitrated? Where where does the money come from if the applicant can't be for whatever reason held responsible? Well, basically, the mission. I I want to put forward that the mission of the tree committee should be expanded to include the scenic overlay district so that when these uh violations occur they can step in and either hire a professional using a uh, a budget line that we are we are proposing they get for these things to be paid out of uh the fund that would be created from the fines collected uh under these uh, violations. So the purview and mission of the tree committee in assisting the planning board and enforcing the standards in the scenic overlay district shall include consultation on assessing at the behest of the planning board in efforts to avoid and mitigate any damage from illegal tree modification in the scenic overlay district. The planning board shall vote to request input from the tree committee on an advisory level and their services, services expertise made available to applicants every step of the process. 
Um, and two, like I mentioned before, the, the tree committee shall receive an appropriate budget line to hire professionals when, uh, well, allowing for ongoing review of existing violations in the process of remediation in the form of annual semi-annual follow-up visits to applicants to monitor the health and growth of tree of the trees planted towards repairing the viewscape. So to answer your question, Jude, it wouldn't be up to the applicant to admit to be the arbiter of whether or not their mitigation or remediation efforts were substantial or adequate enough. Um, that would be determined. I want it to be determined either by a environmentally uh, inclined board that already exists or stipulate the hiring of a professional on a case by case basis. The one thing I'll say about the tree committee <clears throat> is there is a lot of knowledge in there now. And I want to believe that, you know, they're going to continue to be around to, to offer the, that knowledge and, uh, an effort, but it's also, you know, speaking as also a volunteer board person, like, there is a sort of investment and a uh, an ownership that we take on in these cases that even sometimes professionals don't. I mean, if I can be quite frank, I wasn't necessarily satisfied with the professional that got hired on the last one. I believe it was the Valley View way. Not that I'm saying, you know, she isn't, they weren't capable, but it felt like it was kind of just done on a whim. They picked the cloudiest day, possible day to do it. And it ultimately was not very useful having some type of, you know, existing board to keep these, this process accountable and, uh, to have some local investment in each one, I think is of its own value. Um, but that is it. That is the, uh, that is before, what you, before, before you get, you, you, I know, you, keep, you keep moving along. Okay, oh. sure, sure, go back where you were. If, if I had a wish, I would wish that, that item E1, you, you got some really long sentences there and I'll tell you, I, I'm getting confused as I read them. So I don't know if there's any way to break item one. You got two kind of long sentences that kind of really run on. I don't know if there's any way to break them because they'll be more clear. So I would have to kind of like take this and read it and stare at it to really make sure I understand what it's telling me because the sentence is so long. Um, and item two has kind of like one really long sentence too. So I, I would ask that you look at E1 and two and see if there's any way to break the sentences up a little bit to, because, I, yeah, I mean, you're showing it to me, but I can't say I fully understand it because I got to, you know, you're, you're, you move the screen, you scroll the screen yeah, up and down. About I gotta, that. Like, yeah, I'm trying I gotta to like, figure out how how to yeah. forward it. I'm in, I'm in a different view than I'm used to. So well, now what's that? You, you got a thing that um, well, you, you got you got a folder with an arrow, and then you have something that looks like an arrow to the right of it. Labels. Oh, okay, and more. And there's nothing there that forwards. That's like a really weird. Forward all. Well, that's like a really weird thing. You don't want to discard it. Oh, I I see what's going on. I'll fo I'll forward it to you after. But me but but me and Ed uh, can take another stab at that section. Um, right. Basically, though, what we're what we're driving at here, and I can and yes, I think we could break it up a little bit more. Is we want is we want to include this additional language in the mission of the of the tree committee because right, right now they're pretty much constricted to the hamlet. And right. this is an issue right. that just keeps coming up. Um, and I don't see why if we if they're good, if it's good enough for the Hamlet, why can't we at least again to be approved by the planning board and stuff, request their input and uh, strategies in an official capacity that could be accepted by, say, the planning board, the town mm -hmm. board, whoever. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. No, but I appreciate the work that you both done. I know, I know I'm, 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 I'm picking at it, but it's the first time that I've seen it. And so, um, yeah, and it is, you yeah, know, it's a little different. It is a little difficult as it's, you know, moving and stuff like that. But in any event, um, I think I, but I, like I said before, I do, what I really like about it is I really like that you've focused on a few key things that you've inserted in because you've got some, um, 
you know, you're, you're, you're making your points and you're not making like 500 points, you're making about five points, which is really cool. And then weaving them in there. So I think we need to get kind of used to it a little bit, but we'll look at it again. And I think you're going to focus on it a little bit. So I think that you've, yeah, I, th I think it's got a lot of promise in terms of what you have in there. And I mean, and again, I, I bolstering and uh, clarifying what's already there. Is there anything you feel, you know, also needs to be touched upon? Because the one thing that was also brought up by the planning board that me and Ed decided wasn't really um, actionable right now was there's a little bit of conflicting language at what stage the planning board receives these things. But to mm -hmm. be honest, uh, I, 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 I believe that with all the additional clarification we're putting in there, it's not as important whether or not it makes it to the planning board because the building department will also, I imagine, mm -hmm. use this for, towards their guidelines. Well, so, hopefully uh, they should, yeah. So, yeah. Cause this is going to ostensibly, this will be the law. So I, like yes. I said, I, as far, as far as pending the, um, review and punch-ups we are discussing now, yeah. um, this I think is a good phase one in terms of, uh, uh, get putting some more teeth, uh, in, in on with and seeing how that goes while we also work on things yeah. like inventory, et cetera. So, so I guess the other thing is, and I'm still thinking back to Valley View way and what, in my opinion, went wrong. And the one thing was the building department saying, oh, but the trees weren't, you know, the tree, the trees were less than six inches. So they, you know, weren't protected. Well, they, they are in the scenic overlay. So you might add some words that say, you know, trees of any size, because they, you know, they, they seem to ignore the fact that you're in scenic overlay and it says no non-essential tree cutting. So you may want to say something about trees of any size are protected. Um, and, and there, there also does need to be a way, because if a tree's dead, you need to be able to take it out. So uh, there, we want to have this be strict, but we also want to have it be reasonable from the standpoint <laughs> that if you do have a dead tree, you're allowed to remove a dead tree. And you know somehow that needs to be in there. I'm not quite sure how that is, but those are kind of my, my other two thoughts. Um, so perhaps maybe again in section G after uh, topping limbing or practices that would harm the health of these critical trees, comma, regardless of size. Regardless of size. I think that would be helpful. Um, but, but, but yes, I think that would be very helpful. And then somehow, again, that if you need to trim your tree because it looks bad it's, or it's dropping branches or yeah, your house is going to be at risk because it's about to fall over on your house in the next ice storm you do need to be able to protect your property and yeah and 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 so. that again is defined in non-essential to have mo no fund fundamental impact on the buildability of the lot or the, the safety, safety of right. existing structures yeah. so i think that again because we didn't want to have this the problem that i feel like was coming up in the last discussion that jeff was pointing on where we get too in the weeds about mentioning oh, right. a right. lot of specific things and then we create essentially a a, a net that is too wide that yeah. we can't actually catch anything yeah. in. Um, so, 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 I, so I might, when you say or the safety of existing structures, I might just say, or safety, because I have to tell you in my property, even if a tree, even if a tree is not gonna hit one of my structures, I feel like I ought to have the right to walk anywhere I want on my property. And I wouldn't want a tree that could be killing me if I walk under it either. So I might just say, instead of safety of existing structures, I might just say safety, because you want to be able to walk wherever you want on your property. And if you have a tree limb that's about to come down or a tree that's half dead, I do think you ought to be able to get rid of it. So, so that's my other uh, opinion. Um, I can see that. I, the only thing is I, 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 the, the, the thought was to clarify that if it, if building, if it would be essentially more safe to tear down a bunch of trees so you can build something new uh that that's not part of that consideration because um be because and, and but i suppose if we just erase that to say or the safety of the lot well, 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 um, see, just, then see, where see, all see. other measures have been explored and exhausted could 
cover that. Well, well but I didn't even know, yeah, safety of the lot, but just, just safety in general. If I'm driving down my driveway, for example, a tree that falls might not hit any structure, but it might kill me and my car. So I wouldn't want somebody to think that they can't take out a dead tree that's gonna, yeah, again, so you can say safety of the lot, but that might be conf more confusing than just saying safety. If if a tree is causing a safety issue, it can always so come then, down. So then, Ed, can I make the suggestion then that we change should be understood to mean having no fundal impact on the safety or buildability of the lot? Well, there you, there you go. That would be nice, I think. Okay. Um, and, and of course, to continue where all other measures have been explored <laughs> and exhausted. Yeah, there, there you um, go. But uh, if you want, you know, uh, I can forward this to you and we can take it from there. I know we're already late to go, but uh, this is, again, the first pass uh, with you. Ah, oh, there we go. All right. So I'm going <laughs> to. You found it. Yay. Okay. Well, don't forward it to me now. Wait, wait till you have it updated. And I know that it, it's got a lot of, you know. All right. All right. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get that done. And uh, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Sure. Well, we've been we've been through all of our. Um, let me. I'm going to share my screen rapidly because I know everybody's ready to go because we've been an hour and a half. So well, I want to uh, make something um, before we leave. I would like to make. Uh, uh, okay, we'll we'll proposal. do this. Okay, so we'll go to you before we leave. So so uh, March 14th. So we do plan to meet in two weeks. We do plan to meet, talk about status of laws in progress, which we're hoping we get a little more uh, going on some things. Um, uh, review zoning reference document protocols. Now that we have seven people, do we want to relook at our, well, we might just do that. Uh, look at the complete street zoning law statement. I thought that I, well, one of the laws in progress is scenic overlay. So, so that's going to be a key thing that we're looking to do next time is uh, uh, you know, scenic overlay is one of them. So, okay. So I think that we're good on that. So with all that, I'm going to stop sharing. And David, what did you want to weigh in on? Well, I wanted to, that the, the uh, I guess it was the housing committee submitted for the library. That 100,000 gallon, they be exempt from uh, 100,000, uh, less than 100,000, more than 100,000 gallons of effluent. I thought, uh, wasn't it 1,000? Well, 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 first of all, let me weigh in for a sec. I think that the thing is, I think that the thing, yeah, the 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 thing about that is nobody exempted the library. The library is exempt because the library is its own independent government body. It doesn't have to listen to what other government bodies. It do. doesn't have to follow the zoning law. You say. Yes, that is exactly what I'm saying. So nobody exempted them. They're just exempt because they are who they are. Well, they put it in the. Uh, uh, the proposal, and I just say we'll take it out. Because I think it's, first of all, I really think it's going to endanger the wells down the street. I, you know, not, I have to, is this, is this something that we have a say on? Is this not a question for the library so, board? So you're, talking about, you're talking about the library, David? You're talking about the library and the library's effluent. Is that what you're talking about now? Yeah. Are you talking about the law? The law talking that talks about, about the, the library thousand. that they put in that they be exempt from uh, a thousand gallons of effluent, you know, less than uh, more than than a thousand gallons. Right, but they are because they're the library and they don't have to follow our laws. So they can just do anything they want. Uh, I don't. Well, well, I don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe it either. Okay, so what, what document are you re referencing, David? The one that the, um, I guess it was the housing committee sent around to us. I, and I don't know if I saw that. You must have seen it. We all got a copy of it. The housing committee sent. Uh, the, uh, I, the library um, uh, with an exemption in red of a thousand gallons uh, affluent that they could, you know, more than a thousand, they could uh, put into the uh, the ground a thousand dollar, a thousand gallons of affluent. I I can't comment on something I haven't seen. I don't. I, I see maybe it, haven't. Well, I I'll have to look at it and I'll I'll find it and send it back to you. Okay. 
if you could, that would be good because I, I I'm having I can't comment on something I don't recall. I, I don't recall seeing that. You don't. Well, correct. You. Does anybody recall seeing that uh, document? Uh, no. But this, is, I, 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 I got to be honest. I don't follow the library <laughs> very closely. I, well, not, it's not my uh, top issue. It was it was sent by Richie and um, a couple other people on the. Is it Susan Goldman? The housing committee. No, it was sent by three people. It was a comment on the uh st strictures of the wellhead overlay district zoning change it has nothing to do with it's it's it has to do with what that committee now is working on of the wellhead overlay district regulations and they are challenging the uh, thousand ga uh, the the uh, amount of uh septage or water use that could be used in properties within that district. So I'm going to pull up and it might have been in it might have been in my email. Now just a heads I'm sorry to interrupt but I will probably have to go soon so Yeah, I got to go too. I mean Yeah, okay. I, uh, I I I if now that I understand it's framed a bit better for me um I am leaning towards Jeff's point of view. I mean, if they're, if in, the, in fact they are, you know, exempt from that, and if they are willing to update their septic to to be, you know, reasonable and accommodate it, I guess I can see that working out. Though I don't, in principle, believe they should be exempt from <laughs> zoning law, yeah. regardless of their whether they're a government body. So it sounds like something we need to look into okay but i just i just want to ask real quick what, whether this is what you're because this is what i sent out today i sent out today that not today people, it was a um, couple of weeks ago okay fine so if you could send it to me that would be good because i know right. I, I put out today that we're going to ask people that. okay do i have a mo I, I hear people want to adjourn people are saying they're going to be jumping off do i have a motion to adjourn motion. I have a motion to adjourn <laughs> I, I, I heard ed i heard david next week, uh, uh, next all in favor, but, but um, David said, "Yay!" So, so David, <laughs> I got Janine. Janine's on smiling. Okay, so David, send me if you would, um, if you can find that, send it to me because I I'm not sure what it is. Right. Okay, I'm surprised you didn't see it, but uh, well, I I might have seen it, but uh, it's not in context. So if you could resend that, I can do something about it. But I I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. So. Okay. okay. Any, anyway, we're, we're Thank good. You. Thank and you, everybody. Good night. <laughs> bye bye. Mm -mm, the heck is my mouse? Oh, and I'm clicking. And there we go. Bye, everybody.